In this video, let's learn the SQL statement to create a table. Previously, we mentioned that a table is like a Excel spreadsheet. It has its rows and its columns. Now the rows are representing the data. When we try to create a table, we are not concerned about the data yet. We are only concerned about the structure of the table. Now what determines the structure of the table? It is those columns that determines the structure of the table. Therefore, when we try to create a table, we need to specify the columns. I know that this course is all about learning SQL. We are not going to actually cover database design in this course, but I still need to mention a little bit, which is when we try to design a table on paper, we use table name followed by the column names to represent the table. So for example, here I have person as the table name and the name and age as the column names. Therefore, the SQL statement that we use to create table also follows the same kind of representation. So let's go into SQL Server Management Studio. If create database are the keywords for creating a database, then what will be the keywords for create a table? Obviously, it's going to be create table followed by the table name. We're going to use the same example. So we're going to create a person table and then the person table has two columns. It's going to have a name column and then the age column. Now you can see that there's red squeaky lines, meaning that there's syntax errors, right? So there are problems with this representation of the table. Why? Because in the database, we need to specify the data type, right? Here, the data type needs to be specified right after the column name. Here, the name of the person should be a string. We're going to use characters to represent the string and the length of the character is going to be 50. And then age is going to be a number. So here I can say INT, which represents integer. Now you can see the right squiggly line is gone. Another thing I want to mention is typically a table may have many columns. So when we write SQL statement to create a table, typically we want to break this into different lines. So this is what we usually do. We break from here and then have each column occupy a line so that it looks really, really clear that we have these number of columns and what, what are the type of the columns. Another thing I want to mention before we actually create a table is that we have our SQL Management Studio connected to a SQL Server, which is a database management system. Remember, one database management system can have many databases. And inside each database, we can have one or many tables. So when we create a table, we have to be very clear about inside which database are we going to create a table. Here, I want to create the person table inside my first database. But from this drop down list, you can see that I am currently targeting the master database, which is a system database. So this is incorrect. So there are two different ways to specify which database I'm going to use to create a table. One way is to use the UI and I can just open up the drop down and select database. Now, when I try to run this SQL statement, by clicking on the execute button it tells me that commands completed successfully. And if we open up the first database, open up the tables folder, highlight the tables folder and click on the refresh button here, you can see the person table is created. And if we open up this, there's a columns folder. We open up the columns folder. We can see the name and age created for us. Now there's a different way to specify which database we're going to use. So imagine I'm going to create another table that is called person one. If I'm currently on master database, if I just run the execute statement, person one is going to be created inside the master database, but I want to create the person one table inside the first database. So instead of using the SQL management UI, I can use a SQL statement, which is the use statement. So I'm going to say use and then followed by the name of the database. So I'm going to say first database. When I do that, and then I click on the execute button, 
even though on the UI, the current selected database is master database, this use SQL statement is going to switch database first and then run the create table SQL statement. Okay, so let's try to do that. Click on execute button now. Now you can see commands completed successfully and then you pay attention to this drop down. It's already switched to the first database, right? Because our use statement help us to switch to database first and then run this SQL statement. So let's open up and just make sure that we actually created the table. Refresh and now person one shows up right here. Again, we learned how to create table. Now let's try to delete those tables. So if drop database is the SQL command or SQL statement to delete the database, then what is the SQL statement to delete a table? You guessed right, it's drop table followed by the table name. So I'm going to say drop table. I'm intentionally use lowercase letters to show you that SQL statements are not actually case sensitive and then followed by the table name. So there are person one and I don't have to use uppercase. I'm just going to use lowercase. Like I said, even the name is not actually case sensitive. Okay, so I highlighted because I have multiple statements. I don't want to create the table again. I'm just highlighting this. At the same time, I make sure that I'm using the correct database and then I press on F5. So commands completed successfully. Now I highlight the tables folder, refresh it, and I don't see the person one table anymore. I can do the same thing for the person table, but this time I want to use the UI to delete the table. Just right click on the table and then click on delete and confirm that we want to delete it. Click on OK. Now the table is deleted. Before I finish the video, I also want to show you how to create a table with the SQL Management Studio itself, with the UI itself. So right click on the tables folder and click on the new menu item and select table. Now you can see that by default, the name of the table is table underscore one. We can change the table name later. But now we can specify the column name and then the data type. Right. So we're going to use the same thing, char 50. And don't worry about this just yet. And we're going to specify age as the second column and the type is integer. Now I can just click on the save button and it asks for the name of the table. I can change it to person and click on OK. Now the table is actually created and let's refresh this tables folder and we have the person's table created. Now you go ahead and try to delete this with SQL statement. So this is the exercise for you. I'm going to wait until you finish. Hopefully you have done it. Just drop table followed by the name of the table. So I, this time I want to use uppercase. Like I said, usually SQL statements are written in uppercase. So I'm going to do control shift U. Immediately all of the letters are changed to uppercase. And then I'm going to highlight the statement that I want to execute and then press on F5. Now commands completed successfully. If I highlight the table folder and click on the refresh button, I don't see the table anymore. The table is deleted or we can see the table is dropped. Okay. That's everything I want to cover in this video. I'll see you in the next one.